recently Oracle announced ARM-based cloud computing and an addition of ARM-based virtual machines to the Oracle cloud infrastructure. A part of that announcement is the introduction of additional compute powers available in the always free tier. That is quite a generous offering that allows you to create virtual machines with up to four cores and 24 gigabytes of RAM. That is quite a compute power and specifically it allows you to create larger virtual machines having more RAM and memory for your memory intensive computations. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create that virtual machine and how to connect that to the GitHub Actions so you can use that ARM-based virtual machine in the cloud to build GraalVM native images of your applications using GitHub Actions. So let's get started. I'm going to log in into my Oracle Cloud account. And this is the always free account that I have available. And what you want to do is you want to go to the create the virtual machine field. And the important part is among the other fields that you need to configure and you need to name your virtual machine. The important part is you want to change the shape of your instance. And when changing the shape, you want to pick the Ampere ARM based processors. You want to pick the flex shape name. And the most importantly, you can have this slider you can use the slider to increase the amount of CPU and memory that comes available for your instance. So after that, you select the shape, check that the data is here, check that the always free eligible tag is on the shape. And this will allow you to configure your machine further and to create an instance of that particular configuration. So. I have one of those instances pre-configured here. So it is called FreeArm24. And you can see that it's running exactly four CPU and uh, 24 gigabytes of memory. Here's this instance. It is exposed to the internet and I connect, can connect to that through SSH. Here I am in the terminal running in that instance. And you can see that indeed, if I run HTOP to look at the resources available, there are four cores and there are 20 plus gigabytes of RAM available for my machine. Now, what I can do with this, I can connect this machine to GitHub Actions and use it as a runner for the jobs that GitHub Actions wants to execute. In order to simplify the setup of the GitHub Actions, I pre-installed Java and necessary development tools on this machine so I don't have to configure that through the action definitions. You can, of course, do that. And this is your preference, how would you like to do that? But here's my setup. So I have my Java. And if I run Java minus version, you can see that it runs on GraalVM. I also have the native image component available because I want to build my native image of a sample application. So I need to have that available. And also I have Maven installed and running. So all those things are available on my instance of the machine. So I don't have to configure that on the project using the GitHub Actions workflow. Let's take a look at the project actually. So I have my machine ready. I have my sample project here available on GitHub and it's a very simple spring application. So it's a spring application. You can see that it is indeed a spring boot application. It has just one controller that simulates business logic. This controller is available at a URL called primes and it will compute the prime numbers for us and output them to, uh, to the response of the HTTP request. Now, the interesting part here is of course, is that the POM XML, the configuration is specified to use native image Maven plugin to build the native image out of our Spring Boot application. So that means that if we run the correct Maven command, it will run the build and it will build the native image and it will uh, be available there as the standalone binary file. Now, which command you ask and how do I specify and enable that uh, in my repository to connect that to GitHub Actions? You need to create the .github workflows files where uh, using a fairly straightforward YAML configuration, you can tell GitHub that on push 
to the branches or on pull requests on other triggers, you can run certain commands. So we will check out the uh, code. We will run the maven minus p native image package command. This is how we instruct this particular Spring Boot project that we would like to build the native image out of that application. And then we will upload the artifact from the path target and the application name. We will upload that to the GitHub Actions UI so we can then inspect it or run it somewhere. Now, the important part is that native image computation and compiling it is a memory intensive process. And it's also a CPU intensive process as well. So the more resources you have available, the faster than that build would be. And the default GitHub Actions uh, VMs that are available for you have a few CPU and I think uh, around seven gigabytes of RAM. So building the application on a much more powerful machine with four cores and uh, 24 gigabytes of RAM will speed up the process. That's why we will specify that this GitHub action should run on the self-hosted runners. And this will not make them run on the default VMs that GitHub provides, but it will make it find the runner that is connected with the tag self-hosted and then run it. How do you add a virtual machine to the GitHub action as a self-hosted runner, you ask? There is plenty of documentation uh, about how to do that. But in a nutshell, what you have to do is you need to go to settings on your repository. You go to actions, you go to runners, and then you can see that I have that machine here, but you click add runner, you pick up your uh, operating system, which is Linux ARM64 in this case. And then you have the, the tags and the commands that you need to execute to configure that machine. So you download a piece of software, you unpack it, you configure it and run it, and then it will be available and it will connect to the, uh, it will connect to GitHub and based on the token, it can add itself either to repository that you configured or to the user or organization. So in this case, we configure that and we enable that for this particular uh, uh, repository, right? So it's there. Now we need to run that runner. So if I look here, if I go into the actions runner, and this is the directory that you create while following those steps in the instructions, you can see that there is a run script. So I will just run it immediately. It will start the application for the GitHub actions. It will connect to GitHub and it will make itself available as a self-hosted runner. Now back in our uh, application UI here in the GitHub UI, you can see that this runner is idle. Now, when we trigger the GitHub actions uh, action, then this GitHub, th this runner will pick it up and start building that. So for example, what I can do, you can go to actions, you can manually trigger the, the runs. So I can just say rerun jobs and we'll see that it will start working uh, on our runner. So we will not wait for this to finish, even though it takes just a few minutes, but we can ex ex inspect the previous run. You can see that the Maven build is running. Let it be. And let's go and check the previous successful run that was not aborted. So if we look at this, and if we look at the output of the build with Maven command, we can see that somewhere at the very bottom of the log output, what we have is we have the information about the native image built. So you can see so for this particular application, the total of uh, total time that it took to build the native image is two and a half minutes. And it also took almost seven gigabytes of RAM, which means that on a smaller machine, it will have to use a smaller heap and it will just spend more time doing garbage collection during the native image build process and the whole thing will be slower. So when the build with Maven succeeds, we also can upload the artifact to GitHub. And what you can see here for this particular run, there was the primes, uh, the primes artifact that is available here, and you can download that and it will contain that binary file that you can then drop into the uh, VM or run it on the appropriate hardware. In the current case, this is the R64 bit hardware uh, because that's the R64-bit native binary 
So you need to run it on that particular hardware. It can be the same Oracle machine, Oracle Cloud machine, or any corresponding R64 bit machine. It can be a Raspberry Pi or anything like that. You can run it in a Docker in those environments as well. Let's see how it looks. I will not run this particular application because I need to download and upload this to the machine. But if we if we look at uh, what's also available in the actions runner directory there, there is the work directory and we're going to go there and we're going to go into the uh, GitHub actions native image repository and the uh, one more time to the repository. And this is where our project was checked out and built. So if we run target and the application name, uh, is it building currently? It is currently building. So we have to wait a little bit more time for, for the build to succeed. While we wait, we can explore what are the resources that it is taking. We cannot use this. Takes a little bit of memory, nine gigabytes and takes quite a few CPU. So the compilation process is running. This is all good and normal. You can see the compute power is used very well. So now the build has succeeded and we are uploading artifact to the machine. You can see that the build took three minutes, nine seconds altogether. And uh, so here it took approximately the same amount of time and approximately the same amount of heap space to run this. Now let's go back to our machine and let's see how that application actually runs. So if you run target here in our thing, we have the application, it's a binary file. So if we look at the, at that file, it's a, it's a, it's a normal native image application. And if we run it, then it will start our spring application in hundreds, uh, in a tenth of a second and the application is there and ready. We can also stop the runner here and we can also curl the, the application just to show that it's working. So we're gonna call for the prime numbers with the range from 100 to 200 and try to see the output. So you can see on every request, it outputs us some prime numbers, which is the intended behavior of this application. This is how you can connect your Oracle Cloud always free ARM-based virtual machine to the GitHub Actions and run uh, it on the push or on any trigger and build GraalVM native images from your projects.